place. Wendell Berry, who's an author and a poet and a farmer, has a famous quote that goes, if you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are. And that really sums up for me what it means to have a sense of place. It's the intersection of where knowledge and information and data and history intersects with personal story, emotion, memory, feeling, and experience. I think that, navi that, that sense of place can really be thought of also as a navigational tool, that it's a way to learn about places through the information that we learn. We kind of see where we are by that information. And we learn about who we are. It's a tool of self-discovery. And it's also a tool, as Wendy was saying, for planning, where we decide what matters to us, what we care about, what we want to take care of for the future going forward. Um, I think that, you know, if you're, if you're new to a place, you can root yourself, you can, you can find a way to heal some of the disconnect that we experience in our society and our world. You can root yourself in these layers of time and history and personal story and experience. You can find the layers and they're an anecdote to many of the fears and worries and concerns that we experience in times of great crisis and change. You can really root yourself in a place and find those layers. So I've had the fortune to work with people across the country. I'm really interested in your stories of place and belonging and connection. And I teach um, workshops that help people sort of pull on the threads of time and story and discover them. So I'm remembering one time when I was teaching this workshop and there was a woman who, you know, I have people write about what's going on in your life, your personal sort of, what's, what's the viscosity of your life. And she was writing about how everybody needed something from her. Her mother was sick and she was driving back and forth. Her husband um, needed her attention, her kids, you know, they had homework and everyone needed her time and attention. And then I asked her to write about a place that's meaningful to her. And she wrote about, in the mornings, how she would slip out early from the house and she would walk down the field to the, to the barn where she had a, a cow, a dairy cow. And in the morning, the sunlight would be shafting in, you know, through the window and that sort of golden stream of light the way it does. And she would take her stool and she would pull it up to the cow. And she would lean, she would take the udders and, you know, they would splash into the milk pail, making that sound. And she would just sort of milk the cow and she would lean in and the cow would take her weight. And I just think in our lives, we need those moments, those experiences where we can lean in and something can take our weight. And I find that in finding my sense of place and capturing those moments um, of experience that root us to who we are and to where we are. Um, otherwise, we're just living life sort of at the pace of a GPS. We're moving from point A to point B. It's functional. We're getting places. We're doing things. But when you slow down and you tap in, you hear the stories and the music of the places that you inhabit. So you, you can also learn so much about where you are. You can learn about the history. You can learn about the nature. I'm remembering a time when I, I was at a workshop and I and they said, oh, John is going to go outside and give us a talk about the stars. And he started to tell us the stars, and he would point out a constellation. And then he would go into so much more depth and detail that, that I had ever experienced. And I just had to ask him, how did you learn about the stars in this way? And he said, oh, I spent my life at sea. I was a longshoreman. And way back when, we navigated primarily by the stars. And I just thought that is such an intimacy with place. And there's so many ways to have that intimacy um, as you learn more and more about the nature and the history and the culture. But you don't need to know anything. You can simply experience a place through your senses. Um, last summer, I was invited up to the um, to, to Wisconsin to work with the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Upper Mississippi Fish and Wildlife Refuge, to help visitors find their stories of connection to places. And so w this was a group, <coughs> they had me work with a group of third graders who were from the La Crosse region. 
although I was told that many of them had probably never been out on the river, even though they lived near it. And so <clears throat> we all boarded a boat on the Mississippi River, and we crossed the, the river, the working river, as they call it, with the barges that you could see going up and down. And we left the skyscrapers of the cross behind, and we sort of came across the river, and we went around to this slough, and we saw an osprey nest. We talked about how that's a home for the birds, for the ospreys. And then we saw, you know, a great blue heron take off and how it, that was its home and it lived there. And then we kind of, kind of came around a corner and, you know, the city was very far behind. And it just, you looked out and it was green and vibrant and beautiful. And it was, um, it was like you could have been, you know, Lewis and Clark. It was, it was wild. And, and, um, and we talked about the, the Beaver Lodge and how that was a home. And I have the kids come out on the boat in small groups and go through a practice I call um, checking your earth mail, which is just sort of tapping into all the sensory information you receive coming in. So I say, you know, what do you smell here? What do you see here? What do you, f what do you, what do you hear? And then most importantly, I think, I have them place their hand over their heart, like Pledge of Allegiance style, and say, what do you feel here? And one by one they answered, I feel calm. I feel happy. And then one little boy, I could tell he was the shy one, had the thick rimmed glasses and messed up hair and jacket, and, and he said, I feel like I belong. And I just think that's why I do this work and a lot of others I know who do sense of place work or anything that has to do with connecting people and places is to foster that sense of belonging and that that is the foundation for making the choices for the future that we want to make for the stewardship, preservation and planning of our natural and wild places. So. I think that the slowing down and tapping into these moments, these, this knowledge, these stories, that is the key. That is the, it's the sensitivity to places that is the key to our future. And without that, we are living just as a GPS functionality. You know, it may, it may serve us, but it doesn't stir our souls. And as human beings, we're hardwired. We need to have that. We have that all the time. We have that resonance with places and feelings, but we just need to slow down enough to capture them and reflect on them and to create meaning and to share those stories with each other. For the past two decades, I've been a touring singer-songwriter and also an educator and a speaker about this topic, sense of place. I actually started studying it when I went to college because I was interested in exploring how we relate to places and how places affect us. And, um, and I was doing sense of place work then. And so, but I went off to be a touring songwriter and what would happen is I would fall madly in love with places. I have sort of, as, as Daniel mentioned, I sort of love to be a sense of place sleuth. And I think this is something I learned from my father who loved to take us out into the country and sort of take us to a small town and you know, ask us why is this, why is this town here? What's the, um, the industry that it, that it created? What's the, why is the railroad here? And what do you think the river brought in? So he was sort of mentoring me in how to inquire about why a place exists. And then he also loved to just take us to, you know, like I grew up in Maryland, so he would take us to Civil War battlefield grounds and he would raid, he would go on and on about the battles that had once raged. And um, it was kind of, you know, when you're a little kid, it's kind of like boring and you, <laughs> you've been lured there by the promise of ice cream and he's giving a history lesson. Um, but when I look back in retrospect, I'm so glad that when I was curious about learning more about the Civil War and some of the stories, that I had a sensory memory, I had a place memory of what that, what that was like. Um, so even though I, I didn't fully appreciate it then, it's, it, it really created something of who I, who I am. Um, so touring, yeah, so I would come to this place, I would fall in love with them, and then I would return and I would see that they had changed. And I thought at the time that, I thought, they must, people must be really disconnected with what's so special about this place, or they never would let that happen. I can remember one place in Wyoming, there was this beautiful, you know, I came over this mountain ridge, down the mountain, into this beautiful open valley. It must have been someone's ranch, it was huge, but it was just open. And then just two years later, I returned and I saw the valley had been sprinkled in by what they call ranchettes. And what it did was change the music of that place. 
Um, and so I wanted to sort of help, not just be an entertainer, but help people find their stories of, of connection to places. And I feel like those stories are the tipping point. They are what bring us from, well, let me back up and just say, I know it takes time and money and energy and focus to um, protect places or conserve them or make choices. But it also takes heart and passion and vision and story. And that without those stories, it's just a functional place. So it's inhabiting our places with the stories that have meaning to us, that, that fuel us. I mean, stewardship can sound like a lot of hard work. It is hard work. And it takes, it takes years. And when we get overwhelmed with that hard work and all the energy and time and focus it takes, what brings me back to center, what inspires me, what fuels me is these stories of connection to places. Um, and so it's something that can give us energy and realign us. And I also feel like, you know, there's so many problems in the world, huge and small, and crisis is in our face every day. And that what brings me back to feeling good is looking at what we have in our lives that's here, that's left to love, to take care of. And so to go forward and focus on what it is that we love is, is going to give us the energy to actually do that. Um, so what I want to inspire you to do and when you leave here is to... Um, is to be a sense of place sleuth, to look at the layers of history wherever you are and see how that can root you. To step out your door, not just rushing around, but a moment where it's almost like every day can be a pilgrimage. Um, you can tune in and tap into what, um, to what draws you around you. And I think one of the problems with sensing our place is sometimes it bring up, brings up loss and change and despair. And... Um, and what, what to do. And that the antidote to that is, again, focusing on what there is to love and what we can do going forward. Um, and asking these questions, who are we really? Where are we? What is the sense of our place? That comes from who we are and what we want to do going, future, going forward into the future. So the curator has given me a couple extra minutes for my talk to, um, to sing you a song, because as I mentioned, I'm a singer. <laughs> and so I want to sing a song in honor of this place and also in honor of this weekend. Um, it is Columbus Day weekend. And I want to just begin this segment with a, a, poem, a line from a poem by a woman from a, a tribe in, in Virginia, Kareen Wood. And she says about, she says, nothing here was discovered. Everything was already loved. And so these mountains here were loved by people for thousands of years, for hundreds of generations. I have only been here a short time. My family, my people go back three generations in where I'm from. But I know that throughout time these places have been loved. And so others have loved these autumn colors and these beautiful autumn days, just as you and I. So in honor of the history and the nature and the layers of time and all our stories that create this sense of place, I'm going to sing Quiet Hills, which is a song by Claudia Schmidt. And it goes like this. <laughs> There is a darkness in these hills, I am not afraid. There is a darkness in these hills, I am not afraid. And there is a darkness in these hills, though some may tremble, I am still. No, I say, hope lives in these quiet hills. And there is a darkness in the land, I seek the taste of hope. If there is a darkness in the land, I seek the taste of hope. And there is a darkness in the land with more sorrow than we can stand. But I say, hope lives in these quiet hills. And there is a darkness in my heart, the taste of hope is sweet. Yeah, there is a darkness in my heart, the taste of hope is sweet. 
heart and there is a darkness in my heart but I can feel the healing start but I say hope lives in these quiet hills yeah hope lives in these quiet hills mm, hope lives in these quiet hills thank you